Okay, so today's topic is four types of boundaries. I know people throw out boundaries a lot saying you need boundaries, enforce your boundaries. And you might be wondering, well, what is a boundary and what does that look like in real life? Um, break it down in a practical way that I can understand it. So that's what we're going to do today. Four types of boundaries. So as I heard someone saying, I love this, so I'm stealing it. What he going to do about it? He don't know. So internal boundary is, is um, boundaries to govern your life. Like you're saying, um, you know, how you want your life to run, what you're okay with, what you're not okay with. Also, external boundaries is saying how you want other people to deal with you. Again, what you're okay with, what you're not okay with. So if you come from a healthy family, like where you probably had family meetings and people got to express themselves and you were heard, not saying that your parents gave in to just everything you wanted, but people cared about how you felt, what you thought about. It was okay to like what you wanted then it's probably easy for you to tell people, hey, I don't like it when you do this. Hey, don't do this again. Hey, this is the second time when you did this. This is the third time you done it. See, this is a pattern. See, you don't respect me. I am out. But if you come from a dysfunctional family, you probably have a hard time, a very, very, very hard time setting boundaries because in your childhood, you probably grew up around narcissists, people that neglected to feed you the clean you to do all the type of stuff that should have been done for you. You probably had alcoholics or um, drug addicted parents or people that had mental illness. And, you know, and when that happens, they're not able to really um, accept you for who you are and your differences because it's all about them, especially in narcissism. And when the parent also has addiction, it's all about their needs, what they want. They feel that they can do whatever they want to do to you. You're just an extension of themselves. It's like, hey, if I want to touch you, it's like touching me so I can do it, <laughs> you know? And you're like, oh, stop. They're like, I don't care. Since you're really me, just in another body. I don't understand it, but it's me, it's me. It's all about me. And then you, 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 you know, you learn that it's not okay to stand up for yourself. They may scream at you, have narcissistic rages. Ah! all type of things and as a child it's like oh my god to be safe i can't say what i like i can't say what i don't like i have to like whatever mother or father likes because they're clearly crazy but no as a kid we don't know that our parents are crazy we just think that something's wrong with us and there's a lot of shame because we grew up feeling that wow if i was okay and if i was good and perfect my parent would love me but you're a kid and you don't realize your parent is a narcissist your parent is a um a drug addict or uh, addicted to um alcohol or mentally ill or whatever it is. And so even as you grow up, you're still dealing with life the same way you dealt as a kid. As a kid, you have to protect yourself and be squeamish and not stand up and be assertive. And so you don't stop doing that because something in your mind, whether unconscious or conscious, you're like, I still gotta keep myself safe. And the way to do that is to let people walk all over me, let them have their way. And you think that's working well until something happens to you and you start saying, wow, oh my God, I'm being treated like a doormat. Everybody's walking all over me. What's happening? This relationship, that relationship, this friendship, this, 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 this work. You know, wherever you go, there, the doctor's office, wherever you go, somebody stepping on your boundary. And then you begin to see that you are the common denominator. You are the only person that's constant in all of those different situations. It's you. And then you begin to deal with yourself. So the four type of boundaries is, one is a physical boundary. It is totally okay, you know? And again, I know if you come from dysfunctional families, it's hard, hard for you. I'm um, a product of that. And if I can start on the process of healing, so can you. So I say this not just from clinical um, mental health experience, but I say this from life experience. And I don't say that I got it perfect. I'm, these are stuff that I'm still working on, but I'm better than I was last year and a few years ago. But physical boundary. You have a right to say if you want someone to kiss you, to touch you, to hold you. You have a right not to give your body away for sex just because somebody brought you a hamburger. You don't have to spread your legs. You know, some people feel that, wow, so this person bought me something. I have to now give them sex. You're giving them the most valuable thing of you and you got treated to um, 
Applebee's or the Olive Garden and now you feel like your pants should fall down. I'm not saying they should fall down for a five-star restaurant, but if they're going to fall down for stuff like, for frivolous stuff like that, at least let it be more than something small and meager. However, but the thing is, is you have a right to say no. Like I know I said in a long time video, when I was growing up, I was made to kiss my aunt and she had mental illness, granny, but she would do this. Before she, before she kissed you. And I was, no. And I even say to parents that like, come on, you gotta respect some boundaries of your kids. It's like, if your kid is saying, please do not make me kiss this woman, please acknowledge that because your kid may know something about that person that you don't know even though they're a kid so in order for people to grow up to have healthy boundaries they have to first start in childhood if the parent is all a uh, tyrant and so domineering that they don't let the kid have any type of say how do they expect the kid to grow up to say healthy things you know you're priming them for rape victims and being all types of molested and you know, um, taking advantage of, but some parents like that, especially narcissists. They like you to not have boundaries because they hope that you're going to stay close with them and be their flunky forever. But anyway, if you're striving to be a healthy parent, you know, then the kids have to have some boundaries. Like, no, you don't have to hug this uncle. No, you don't have to kiss on the cheek this uncle. And it's the same for adults. Like, I know, um, you know, um, when I was in school, I had this friend, she liked to touch and stuff and people would let her do it. And some people were okay with that, but I wasn't. And I stuck to that, even though my boundaries were bad at the time. I was like, no, I know you like to, to do that. And she was really cool, but I didn't like that. And you're not wrong. I wasn't wrong. It is okay to have my thoughts. You know, people say, is something wrong with me? Then they wonder why everybody's taking advantage of them. Because when you're always asking, is it okay if I feel this way? Is it okay if I did that? That is a clear sign to any manipulator that you have low self-esteem you don't value yourself you're doubtful confused and you need somebody to tell you what to do because apparently you can't figure it out for yourself if you think it you feel it it's just what it is it don't have to be a right or a wrong it's just your thought and your feeling and you should be able to have that so okay so no, I didn't like this. I, I, I don't like that. And you don't have to like it. Also, um, regarding even with hair, like some people want to touch your, touch your hair. Oh my God, can I touch your hair? If you're okay with them touching your hair, fine. But if you're not okay with them touching your hair, no, you don't have to touch your hair. Because I don't know what's going in your head. You think I'm a zoo animal? What you thinking? Oh my God, let me see. Type of hair this animal has. Oh. Uh, if I don't want you to touch my hair, I don't. And it may change. I may let this one touch my hair. I may not let this one. When, one point I was wearing dress at one job. And this guy who worked with me, cool guy, was like, hey, can I touch your hair? I said, no. He's like, why? I'm thinking like, why? What the heck you asking me why? Go mold your kids. Go raise your kids. But anyway, and I, and I stood on that. No, I don't want you touching my hair. And, and it ain't got to be a why. An answer to that can be just a, just a no. There's no why. Just a no. No why. Just a no. You know, even if people get in too close to you in line, I had that happen and I felt bad because I didn't respond the way I did, but wanted to, but then I had to talk to myself and say, no need to feel bad. Just say, you're going to do something different. I'm always analyzing myself and I'm always looking to perfect different ways in me that I want to improve. So I just say no, and I'm going to do something different. This one was putting stuff all on the register real close behind me. And then I think her pumpkin touched my arm. And she was like, oh, I'm sorry. And I didn't look at her. This is the thing. I should have looked dead at her for three seconds and said something. But what I did say, I didn't look at her, but I did say loud so she could hear me. And I said, yeah, because I am standing here. Um, <laughs> but I was happy because I said something because the old me wouldn't have said nothing. But I did say something back here uh, talking to the person she was with. I couldn't make it all out, but she heard me. So, but yeah, but I would say something like before it got to that point, it's like, in the camera, I'm trying to do it. I need some space. And I don't want to have to say please and all that. You can, but to me, all that pleasing and stuff like that, I mean, if you want to. And if you don't want to, then so what? It ain't a bad thing. You just don't want to say please. And sometimes I don't because sometimes it make me feel weak. I don't want to say please. I need some space. Can you back up? Back up, please. All right. And also, not wanting people to hit you, even if it's play hitting, pushing or pinching, you have a right to say no. Don't like that. Back up off me. Back up off me. Whatever working for you. Also, um, I heard, 
I shared this in my community section. This one lady with narcissism said that narcs, um, they will look at your body expression. For instance, if they ask you something outrageous and they know they're crossing your boundary, but they're trying to play you to see just how much you're going to let them cross your boundaries. They will look at your facial expression and they ask you something crazy and then you like, but then you're like, oh, it's okay, it's okay. See, the, your, your facial expression tells the truth. So they already know like, oh, she didn't want to do it, but she said she's going to do it anyway. Now I got her. I know that anything I ask, even though she can, whoop, she going to do it because she wanted to please. And she, you know, she out to please. Um, another thing, emotional boundaries. It is okay. You control your thoughts and emotions. You are not wrong for this. Um, again, Try to work on that, always asking other people about your feelings and your thoughts. And then you wonder, why are they abusing me? You know, well, because you opened it up that you don't have a clue about how you're operating your life and what's okay for you and your standards. And so they figure they can come and control it. Why not? I mean, some people think like that. I'm not saying it's right or it's wrong. It's just what it is. All right. So you want to look out for people that's always telling you, um, you shouldn't feel this way. It's not okay for you to get angry at somebody because they did this and this. Who is that person to tell you that it's not okay for you to get angry? If you got angry, you got angry, and it's a reason why you got angry. And it's okay to be angry. It's okay to have a myriad of emotions. And the same thing for children. You know, some parents are so insecure and so um, much of a tyrant that they can't handle their kids unless they're only happy. You know, you may have grew up in that household. I know what it's like to grow up in that type of household. The only thing you can show is appreciation and gladness and happiness. Because if you don't, the narcissist or whoever you're dealing with is going to have to face that they're a crappy person. You know, or they, they don't feel good about themselves. Well, even if they're not a bad parent, not every parent is bad. But they have these, these people have these insecurities. And it's like, oh, my God, my, my child is sad. My child can't be sad. You better only be happy. Then people grow up and wonder, well, why did Jimmy shoot up the school? Why did so-and-so do this and prostitute and on the block and on drugs and just a failure in life and why this why this and this so I, I always like to say look at childhood it ain't always about childhood but i'm gonna tell you say what you want about freud okay this is the interpretation of dreams that man has something going on because of years of counseling i always talk to people and even if i don't bring up their childhood they can't wait to tell me about it and a lot of them got horror stories i don't know what it is it's like the people that be attracted to me just got a whole bunch of trauma i guess that was my life mission i'm not saying it was god's will but i'm saying god can turn what was negative and meant to destroy and kill you and send you to the insane asylum and turn it for your good where you can help other people because they can look at you and see you overcame not that i tell them because ain't none of their business it's all about them but you know though okay but yeah so you have a right to have these feelings without someone standing over you you shouldn't feel that way shouldn't think that oh no 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 you shouldn't vote that way you should vote for this one if you vote for trump you're this and this if you don't if you vote for biden you're this and this and if you don't get the shot you're this you have a right to feel and to think what you're gonna think and then for those people you see that these people don't respect you it's okay to back away from them even if it's slowly not answering as many calls you know if it's not being available to go to the park or to the movies and things it's okay to start backing away from these people because some people have bad boundaries you know it's one thing if you go into somebody's house and they like hey i'm really concerned about covid you got the shot and they ask you okay i can understand that but if you just work with a person you know like some of us work with people and they think it's okay to ask you about your shot if you getting tested if you getting this boo go to hr and talk to them if you got any covid anxieties because you don't need to be talking to me about my personal stuff you know but yeah, so it's okay for all of us to have the emotions and things like that. Like, for instance, I remember um, years ago growing up, I was saying that Mary J. Blige sung I'm Going Down Better Than um, the original group, and I can't think of them right now. And the mother was mad. Oh, my God, who are you talking about? That no way they're better. Don't you say that. that uh, oh, oh. And, you know, and it was just going on and on. And it's like, I could not think that Mary J. Blige was better. Everything has to be what this person thinks, you know. Or, you know how a kid will sing a song and they sing it wrong, the wrong version? Like, I couldn't have that liberty. It's like, you sing the song, it's like, if you ain't gonna sing the song right, don't you sing the song at all. That ain't the lyric to the song. 
you, you, you know, so it's, it's always like everything has to be perfect according to what they think is perfect. And they're so insecure and mentally ill that nothing is ever perfect. They're not perfect. <laughs> so they want you to be perfect. It's never going to happen. It's so crazy, Megan. I know. Also, so just as a recap, there's physical boundaries. There's emotional boundaries. Stick with me because I got something special for those who stick to the end. And I'm going to let you know what that is. Also, if you're liking what I'm saying, please like, subscribe, share this video with other people you feel might use this video. Can use this video. And um, leave a comment. And thank you to all my subscribers. I'm at 8, think, 840, 41. I'm trying to get to 1,000 by the end of the year. Help me get there. Let me know what type of videos that you would like about mental health, mental illness. All right, moving on. Material boundaries. Like, no matter the relationship, even if it's you're married to this person, you're dating this person, long-term, new relationships, you don't have to let people borrow your car if you don't want to. You don't have to let them borrow your clothes. They don't have to scroll through your phone. They don't need to know your password if you're not comfortable with it. It is yours you know there's a separation this is me this is you this is me this is you sometimes it may come together some of things may be separate but it's what you have to be comfortable with because if somebody's asking you to do stuff and give them stuff that belong to you and you're not comfortable with it and you do it that's just going to turn into resentment you're like why are they asking me this they shouldn't want my password what are they insecure what are they cheating you know, you don't have to deal with life like that. It's okay to say no. Even with kids, and like I encourage parents, you know, some parents want to go through their kids' purses, the, the wallets, some adults going through people's wallets and um, reading adult journals. I mean, people need to have like their own space. Now, of course, if you think your little Billy about to go and blow up the school or something and he got a little crew with him and a little Tyrone with him and everything like that, little Juan, anybody like that, Look, um, you may want to go through the phone or go through the room if you think he had some guns and stuff. But if it's nothing like that, allow people to have some type of, I guess, privacy. Because it shows people that, hey, it's okay. My parents respect my boundaries. I can grow up and set boundaries with others. If your if a parent is always too overprotective of their kids going through everything, it shows the kids that you can never grow up. You can never have the right to say no to mom or dad. And some people think, I pay the bills. Yes, you pay the bills, but you're also raising somebody who's going to be, should be a healthy, responsible adult who can function in a world without being manipulated. So it's okay to pay the bills and it's okay, you, you know, to um, also to raise somebody that's healthy. Also, even the same thing with knocking on the children's door. Some parents just want to bust in, excuse me. The person can be in there changing clothes, can be naked. Again, you're just showing that person that it's not okay to say no, that everything, it's okay. Forget my feelings, forget my thoughts, whatever everybody else want to do. I'm just to sit here and just allow everybody to walk over me. And that's not a healthy way to be. Also, there's spiritual boundaries. You have the right to believe what you want to believe. Even if other people don't respect that, you have a right to say, hey, I know we disagree, but I am not interested in talking to religion with you you know that person keep on doing it and not respecting you and trying to make you feel bad calling you out in front of people i'm just gonna pray for you the lord rebuke you rebuke you in jesus name and they doing this kind of stuff after you done set the boundary and told them you don't want to do it then you know this is probably somebody you want to limit contact with or you probably just want to ghost i'm okay with ghosts and i don't care but yeah, somebody you probably don't want to be around because you see they don't respect you. With spiritual boundaries, you have a right to ask questions. Some churches don't want you to ask questions. You have a right to ask questions and get them answered to the best of that person's ability. You have a right to assert yourself, to speak up if your pastor, deacon, deacon, this pastor's wife do or say something that you don't agree with or that you don't like. Some people are like, don't you touch the Lord's anointed, touch not his prophet. Oh, just wrong and interpretation of the scriptures and they're like oh that's pastor bill you can't ask him nothing that is a lie you should feel free to speak up and say no i don't like this i don't like when you said that no don't talk to me like that you talk to me like this instead i'm going to be respectful to you and i need you to be respectful of me and again it's hard if you're codependent but it's a muscle that you have to like lift it like weights you got to keep practicing and the more you do it you still want to be scared but you want to learn that hey I didn't get shot in the head. I 
didn't get all my teeth knocked out when I stood up for myself. Oh, this person here stayed when I stood up, but this one left, but hey, I'm attracting my true tribe. So you're learning, like building those courage muscles, like, yeah, I can do this and it's okay. It's going to be all right. But it takes practice. You have a right to not want to give money to the building fund. They still ain't built the church and you're still giving. And people looking around, you ain't going to get to the building fund? You know, did you give? Well, then that's all you need to worry about, sis or brother. Um, I'm not comfortable talking about my finances with people who don't pay my bills, sister, brother. You know, whatever you need to say to get them off your back. It's okay with your time. You don't have to be at church seven days a week if you can't do it. And people ask, why you ain't here? Why you ain't here? When I'm here, I'm here. Let's bless the Lord when I'm here. Thank you. Whatever you have to say, you know, to get these people up off your back. You don't have to be dealing with that, you know. And you have a right not to visit people's church, their um, Hebrew camp. You have a right not to visit their kingdom hall. You know, people try to force you to visit their church, their place of worship. You have a right to say no. Again, briefly, how to enforce those boundaries, letting people know if immediately or soon as possible when they cross their boundaries, preferably one-on-one, -on -one. being specific, what they did that you didn't like and what you would like instead. Also, um... You know, if they do, they do it again to me, you make up your own rules about two, three times and you've had a conversation again with them. The behavior just continues, limiting contact or even going no contact. If it's a kid that's not respecting boundaries, taking away their privileges, using time out, using whatever you found at work. Some people don't believe in spanking. That's their problem. I do. As long as there ain't no bruises and stuff left on there, you know you do what you have to do. Also, you got to be ready to enforce your boundaries. What is the consequence if they keep doing this? Are you going to walk away if you're just bumping your gums, talking your mouth about what you're going to do, what you're going to do? And they see after the two or three times, they were like, oh, this person ain't about what they say. All they do is talk. I can just keep walking all over them. All they're going to do is talk. But you got to be able to enforce it. It ain't no magical solution to this, you know? You also got to learn to deal with, sit with uncomfortable feelings. If you get afraid because people might not like you or be abandoned, you got to sit with that uncomfortable like, yeah, and, and acknowledge the feelings. I feel uncomfortable. I really want this person to stay, but this person wants to go. And have to sit with that anxiety, that anger, whatever it is. Sit with it just means like just feel it. You notice it's there. And then say, okay, yeah, I notice that uncomfortable feeling is there. Now what do I want to do? Do I want to go find a new hobby? Do I want to read a book? Do I want to watch something on Netflix like um, or Hulu, La Brea? I hope they come on tonight. I think it is too. Wednesday, yeah, whatever. And also go to a therapist so you can learn to talk about this kind of stuff. So... Also, I promise you, if you stayed around to the end, here it goes. And I'm just going to rapidly fire these 27 um, personal bill of rights. Let me know what you think in the comment section. So, your personal bill of rights, I got this online somewhere. Um, but here it goes, the first one. I have the right to ask for what I want. Two, I have the right to say no to requests or demands I can't meet. Three, I have the right to change my mind. I have the right to make mistakes and not have to be perfect. I have the right to follow my own values and standards. I have the right to express all of my feelings, both positive or negative, in a manner that will not harm others. I have the right to say no to anything when I feel I'm not ready, it's unsafe, or it violates my values. Eight, I have the right to determine my own priorities. I have the right not to be responsible for others' behaviors, actions, feelings, or problems. I have the right to expect honesty from others. I have the right to feel angry at someone I love and to express this in a responsible manner. 12, I have the right to be uniquely myself. I have the right to feel scared and say, I am afraid. I have the right to say, I don't know. I have the right to make decisions based on my feelings, beliefs, and values. I have the right to my own reality. I have the right to my own needs for personal space and time. I have the right to be playful and frivolous. I have the right to be healthy. If I want to be vegan, I'm going to be vegan. And I don't care that you made something with pork and want me to eat it and try it. I'm not, honey. I'm not. Okay, I have the right to be in a non-abusive environment. I have the right to make friends and be comfortable around people. I have the right to change and grow. I don't have to be stuck and stagnant. I have the right to have my needs and wants respected by others. I have the right to be treated with dignity and respect. I have the right to grieve. I have the right to a fulfilling sex life. I have the right to be happy, and that was number 27. You tell me what it is. These personal bill of rights will help you get your life together because if you come from a dysfunctional family, you probably don't know what your rights are i know i didn't 
I was like, oh, I have, I used to say, oh, I have the right to think that it's okay that I think that it's okay that I feel that. Yes, it's okay that you feel that. So again, like, subscribe, help me get to that thousand. If you already been staying around with me, I do appreciate you. I could not have come this far without you. And thank you, thank you, thank you. Bye.